Boy, I tell you, you never know. You never know who's lurking. <laughs> it's always somebody lurking, just waiting to try to take you out the game. <laughs> Did you know, you know what I'm saying, J.O.? I'm, saying, I'm just over here minding my business, man. <laughs> I ain't even in my old school today. And then I'm sitting here and I'm working and then I just hear somebody outside just, just cutting up, <laughs> clowning, <laughs> acting a fool, just, Hitting the gas off. I'm like, what, what is what is all this <laughs> ruckus about? Ain't nobody called me and gave me no heads up or nothing. Ain't nobody said, Lo, you might want to pull one of them bad motherfuckers <laughs> out today. We got one of those guys coming up here. <laughs> but yeah, he gonna caught me all off guard. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I think you go put that <laughs> shit up. Yeah. What? I heard, I heard a little something about you, so I had to. Oh, no, no. I heard, I heard see, a little something. That just go to show you how much they out here lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> they lying on me. Because he told me he had some shit that was making me go put my shit up. I started to call somebody to drop my shit <laughs> off on the flatbed and race your ass home. And we ain't even racing to a desk. You just call me when you get to the crib. I bet you I'm at home before you. <laughs> Wherever we start out in the city, I bet you I get home faster than you. Jay Wayne, play the music. Cause you you got me, you got me upset. You should have called me earlier in the day. What you doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Line them up. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. You know where I'm at. <laughs> you know yeah, what you, you heard. Were, you weren't you were you were trying to bring that shit out <laughs> when I had my shit out here, though. You wait till a nigga put that shit up. Then you went and got that shit. I just want to put you on notice. Oh, oh I noticed. <laughs> I noticed. You think you the only one with some of that shit? <laughs> Boy. Oh, I, I line them all up. And Nick, I'm, I'm going to let you know that. You caught me off guard today. <laughs> but just for that, the next time I catch you, I'm 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 showing ass. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have every motherfucking You gonna be catching up. Every Camaro variation <laughs> you didn't thought. You got the vert, the, the hard topic. What year is this one? That's what you go. Well, we, where this one been? Catching up. Catching up. <laughs> Oh, man, you. <laughs> Boy, I mean, selling them tiny houses. <laughs> Got you talking big <laughs> shit. You must have sold a lot of I tiny have, houses. A lot of them. All right, well, look, let me go on here and get this shit started <laughs> for me. You goddamn get the fighting off in here, man. <laughs> hey, man, the black market is over. <laughs> That's what the bell mean. The bell mean that it's big money in the bill. Let me put this book up. You ain't read this nasty shit. Yet. You don't need it. Boy, that, that, that right there, that, that shit. I might run make some photocopies of that. Apparently page 29 is a page turn. I nah, number 29. That, oh. is, yeah, them last three pages in there. Yeah, it's a list of I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you read. <laughs> Hey, J-O-N, bro, I was walking through the black market, man, and ran into this terrible person. <laughs> nah, this is a cool dude right here. He changing the whole landscape of where people live these days. He popping up everywhere that's nice. <laughs> even some places that wasn't even nice before and making them nice. Mm -hmm. I think this is a visionary, and he really got some good shit going on, so I had to get him on this black market to talk about these things, man. None other than, look, people gonna think I'm crazy when I say this. <laughs> Booker T. Washington in here with us today, bro. I am not playing. I didn't make this up. What's up, Booker T? What's up? What's up? Man, tell me something good. Only thing good, man, is changing where we live at, where we live at, where we grew up at, changing the hood as we see it. Right. They say you out here making big money deals with the real estate. Man, I think within our culture and the black culture, it's always been big money. Yeah. We just haven't really collaborated enough together to make it happen. To make it even bigger. To make it even bigger right, and right, better right. where we live at. 
You know, the biggest thing about Techie Homes and South Park Cottages that made it historic is not just that we just built a house, it's how we did it. Right. We crowdfunded that development. That's a multi-million dollar development that we built on the backs of just general people saying, hey, you want in on this deal. Right. And I know you used all the money because you ain't do nothing with it. <laughs> yeah, he, he spent all the money, y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking But <laughs> on a street that's infamous, known yeah. for all the bad things, yeah. Old National Godby Road, College Park. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We changed that into an oasis of luxury just because we decided to do something different. Uh, and I grew up around that community. So right. the biggest thing, you know, we turned micro houses into millions. Mm -hmm. That's a $6 million development that we did on Godby Road. I know it. I remember the, the, the process yes, right. of hearing about it. And then when people seeing it, everybody was like, I can get in on the next one, bro. Already sold out. <laughs> exactly. Already sold out. So what was the process of you selecting to go the route with the with the tiny homes and the things of that nature, container homes and shit like that? The biggest reason we selected it is because in real estate, in any metro area market, the average home price is half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay? The person has to be making well over $100,000 a year to be able to afford that home, right? But 75% of people don't make over $100,000. So what does that tell you? The biggest amount of people are living in an area or can't afford home ownership. Right. The biggest way to wealth for anybody, and ask anybody that got money, they own some form of real estate. I don't care if it's land, I don't care if it's a mobile home park, I don't care if it's uh, their mama's house. Whatever it is, they own some form of real estate in order to achieve that wealth. What they would tell you is, is let me give you very luxury apartments with gyms and retail on the bottom and make you feel like you live in a great life. But at the same time, they're strategically moving around you and having all the money. Right. So while you think you're getting to home ownership by paying that rent and saving up, the prices keep going up. You'll never be able You'll to You'll never be able to get there. So the micro home idea came into play is how to gentrify the same neighborhood I grew up in. The average rent in, old, in South Fulton, Old National Godby Road is $1,200 a month. To own one of my micro homes is $1,500 a month. Mm. But I take you from that same street to own the asset on the same street you live in in the income you already work in, you already right. make. Made it accessible. And made it accessible. But that's the difference. I challenge the status quo to make it accessible. The average big developer is just going to give you more of what you like. If you buying it, why change the record? If you dancing to it, why change the record? So if you're all out here buying and rent, uh, renting apartments over and over and over again, why am I going to introduce something different? It's like right. fast food. The reason why you don't never see other types of restaurants in the hood is because you keep consuming the same thing. It's a cash cow. So I'm going to change up the cash cow if you're still buying from it. Man, you really done figured the whole scheme out, huh? <laughs> I've been in a room with big developers, multi-million dollar developers, billion dollar developers, and they're going to tell you the main thing that they worry about is cash flow. Right. And they're getting cash flow off the backs of people who are less fortunate and can't afford home ownership. But because we don't change our habits, they're not going to change how they make money. So while they're on their yachts and their boats and they're getting checks in their mailbox from rent that we pay, we don't own anything. Well, I ain't paying the rent, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you own real estate. Of course. Of course you do. But the biggest thing I wanted to demonstrate is in our neighborhoods, in any metro neighborhood, that we can all come together and build multi-million dollar developments. That's not a singular thing. We didn't even have any bank support when we first started out. Right. You don't need any of that. All you need is, is us and collaboration between us. And you can make anything happen. Exactly. Well, I know that, like, now, these these things are selling out faster than you can put them up. Because right? that's what the demand is always what's been. The, what's the waiting list looking like now? What's over the 3, wait time? Really? Over 3,000. The waiting list is over 3,000 for a techie home. Mm. So we're going to Union City, Georgia next, which is still in the urban outside area of Metro Atlanta. Right. And then we'll be going to Atlanta late this fall. Okay. But, well, as you know, those communities are only 25 to 30 houses. So we still have a big gap to fill for all the people that want one right. and all the people that feel like they want to live in one. Because we just don't offer them just a home. We offer them a whole subdivision, a whole community. Because within South Park, we have a lot of sustainable initiatives. We have a dog park. We have a vegetable garden. We got our own belt line that we mm. call the black line. It's a quarter, acre, a quarter acre, a quarter mile trail that goes around the entire community. Bro, you know we done peeped all this. But we did it on three acres. Of course. 
So my question to people is why you need all this land, 40 acres, 50 acres outside of a metro area when you got one acre, two acre, and three acre lots right where, next door to where your uncle and your grandma live? Let me ask you this. What type of people are, are living in tiny homes and things of that nature now? Everybody. Really? Let me tell you who also is living in a <clears> tiny <throat> home. Somebody you know. Let me ask you a question. You know somebody living in an apartment right now? <laughs> Don't fucking play with me. <laughs> I'm not going to play mine. If you games. live, if the average apartment size in Metro Atlanta is 715 square feet. The average bedroom size of an apartment in Metro Atlanta is one bedroom. The average bathroom size is one bedroom. 3.7 million Atlantis live in an apartment. Average square size, square footage is 700 and below. So when people say, well, who buying a micro home? Well, you are. Because you live in one. You just don't define it as that. You are good at this. I see why you winning. <laughs> but you can talk that shit to them and not me. <laughs> I hope you don't never think that I'm over here drunk. I ain't forgot about that car Didn't shit. Did you ask me for three out of the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I'm looking at, I want about three of them. Yeah. Everybody is, is downsizes. You got to think about everybody. Everything's about affordability. Affordability is not just for poor people. Afford, affordability is for everybody. Right. You got teachers that retired, worked their whole career. 401k done going upside down because the markets crash. They need affordability where they are. Exactly. You got the average homeowner now in Metro Atlanta doesn't buy a home today about 35 years old. That's that right. means since you got out of school since 21, to 35, you haven't owned a home. So let me tell you the numbers on that. If you went 10 to 14 years and you have never owned a home, that means you paid 14 years of rent. Mm -hmm. If the average rent is, let's say, let me just give you a low number, thousand. You might have paid 18 years worth of rent the way the rent prices are set up. You know how much money that is? Yeah, that's a lot. You could have paid off a house by then. At least halfway. But <laughs> we'll spend fifteen hundred dollars at. I ain't gonna tell you what we're spending. Don't at. tell them, man. But we'll spend fifteen hundred dollars in one night. Yeah. At the Waffle House. At the wa <laughs> 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 But that's how we change the whole narrative, and that's how. And we built this community in fourteen months. Right. We, we ain't take two years, three years, five years. We built this whole community in, in fourteen months. Man, I'm up here playing and bullshitting because I know you like that, but. Give the people the contact where they can reach out to you and get the game and get the info that you yeah. got. Because you know exactly what you're doing and you have hit a pocket in the market. And I feel like you, like you said, we always be talking shit, but I know you serious. <laughs> yeah. you, you got the game from the tech billionaires. And yeah. just speak on that for a second. Man. So my and let them know where they can reach out to you and, and you know, get the, get the game you got to. Absolutely. So, you know, my experience come from working around a lot of great leaders. I've had the opportunity to work around Arthur Blank. I've had the opportunity to work around Elon Musk. Um, I've just had the opportunity to be around corporate America and see how wealthy people have built their, their wealth. How do they do it? Through real estate. They started early and they never stopped. And one real estate asset built upon another asset. To keep flipping. And they kept flipping it. That's how they got to millions. And they millions got them into conversations to buy teams and to buy properties, okay? So those types of things is how you become wealthy. But it all starts with that one seed, and that one seed is ownership. Right. Your car note is not ownership, okay? Uh, ain't no car note on that 69, by the way. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but it, 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 I heard he had a little note on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's fucked up. I heard he still made a little note on it. <laughs> um, your car note not, is not an asset. That apartment you living in is not an asset. That townhome you rent from your friend is not an asset. Right. You can't put it on, the, on any application to go leverage it into something else. So that's the wealth of knowledge I, that I gained. And I'm just, a, I'm just a dude from the hood that got a chance to get an essence of knowledge. So I'm going to pass it on the best way I can. So for people that want to reach out to me, you can reach me via social media at Mr. Underscore Booker T, or you can find our community also uh, on Instagram at Techie Homes, or you can just go to SouthParkCottages.com. Uh, but look, we just invite everybody to join the conversation about collaborative economics, man. That's the biggest message because inside of our urban areas and inside of our hoods is millions of dollars worth of wealth and opportunity and we don't want to just give it away. We got to fight and earn a little bit of it. And South Park is just an example of how we could take a micro idea or a tiny dream and turn it into millions. I want a container house. We can build you whatever you want. You know, I'm, that's, that's my shit. I like, I love them container crib. I want one. You want one? Yeah. We can make that happen for you. 
Yeah, I want to go ahead and lay me out some real. How dope. about we swap uh, a container home for your '67? I got a couple of '67. I look, yeah, we might be able to pull okay, something off. Okay, you pull on something off, yeah. No, for real. I'm right. be playing. You know? <laughs> I know how to leverage assets. <laughs> but uh, but see that how we doing that right there? Yeah. You got something to leverage because you got an asset. Exactly. If you had no asset, you I couldn't flip it. I guess you couldn't flip assets, it to no home. Assets, you yeah. hear me? But that's the biggest part, man, just coming together, uh, you know, bringing knowledge to people about what we're trying to do and uh, just educating them on not missing out on any form of home ownership. I ain't talking about a micro home has to be your forever home, but choose something to own right. that you can leverage into the future. Exactly. Well, shit, you know exactly where we are, man. It's your first time coming through the black market, but don't let it be your last. I'm pulling up. Oh, yeah. I'll be here. <laughs> but you got, no, hold on, hold on, before I ring the bell, you got to call before you pull up because I need to know what you pulling up in. You can hear it. Oh, here you yeah. go with this shit. Yeah, okay, don't let this shit happen again. Yeah. If, if anybody even see what he pulled up in anywhere around this area, let me know. You don't bring that shit to the south side. <laughs> okay. You take that shit back up that way. You don't bring it over here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but man, you got My a dope-ass ride, too, and I'm going to send somebody out there with the camera so they can see <laughs> why we keep going back and forth about it, man. Come 85 see about South Show Black Market. Appreciate we out of here. Book T. Washington.